What's going on guys? Jake here for Dude Ranch DIY. We, I, just got home from work. It's actually we. Chris is, is over here. I'm looking at him right now. He's backing in with his truck and his dump insert. We just got home from work um, and we are out here in the wood yard. We have a lot of firewood to deliver this week and today we're going to be delivering two cords at once. There's my buddy's father and their neighbor each order a cord of wood from me every year and because they're about a half an hour away 25 minutes or so my plan um, is to load up one cord in the international dumpster truck the other cord in the sure track dump trailer and kind of kill two birds with one stone in the past I've tr I've loaded two full cords into the dump trailer and just dumped like half in one driveway, half in the other. That They're not super particular about like who gets more or whatever. They just kind of work that out amongst themselves. Um, but today I'm gonna try and keep it, you know, a little bit more even and we have the equipment so we might as well use it. I think it'll just be a little bit easier doing it that way rather than trying to load two cords up into one container. Um, they like, they're just burning in their fireplace. They like fast burning, hot ash is what they like. Ash, poplar, stuff like that. They don't want the oak. It's all for ambiance and the snap, crackle, uh, you know, pop effect. So that's what we're going to give them. We have a bunch of ash. Uh, I think we have two totes of poplar and a tote or so of maple that we're going to go through. I got to look at all the dates and everything. And we're going to load that up. Then tomorrow we have another delivery to the brewery that I've been delivering to and another repeat customer in an adjacent town. So we're going to load those two deliveries up in Chris's pickup truck with the dump insert. I just tried to explain what was going on, but I don't know that much of it made si much sense. <laughs> You're not making much sense today at all. You know? Yeah. Right. Okay, that's what... Oh, there's your glove. There's my glove. There it is. Uh, Ready it to use. Might be a little cold. Watch out. Give that to Betsy. She'll thaw it out in a second. Right, Betsy? What happened? Is it chilly? I have never done this before. No. Never tried this in the bed of my truck. We'll see how this goes. Oh, sounds like a casualty already. Man, that wind is brutal right now. Okay, so we've never done this. The first tow went in nice and easy. Now Chris is on the Cormitty, and he's gonna try and lift this up, push that other wood forward, and then just have this kind of in the back of the truck. Um, the cut out portion of the cage is facing forward. Betsy, you're, you're gonna be a shish kebab today, huh? Get out of here. Betsy, go, scram, get out of here. She, she's fine, she, come on, go. Load up. Load up. You're in jail. <laughs> She's in jail. All right. Go up. Link for these Kinko insulated gloves down in the description. Best winter gloves ever. Go forward. Left. 
Left. No. Left. Good. Forward a little and down. Down. Back, back up. Back up a little. Down. Good. Now push it forward. There we go. What one piece? Oh. It's okay. They're not going to know one, you know. <laughs> All right. You're a better man than I. Oh, yeah. That was good. Good job. Yeah, wow. Yeah, so it's really convenient that the brewery has a forklift because they just pick up the whole tote, drive it to exactly you know where they keep the rack, and they don't keep the cage, they just stack it on their own rack because they have it kind of up and out of the way. So that is two deliveries loaded up right there. I have to grab the International, we have to load that up first, and then we can hook up to the dump trailer and load that wood. Sammy, what are you doing out here? Huh? Were you eating some corn? I think she was eating some corn. Got a little dough uh, Thanksgiving morning. She must smell it. Come on, Sammy. Your dad's gonna bring the International back. You wanna take bets on whether or not he stalls it? <laughs> All right, this is the first tote of poplar. This stuff was from the Woodyard expansion, probably back in like, I don't know, May, June? 22, 23, 21. There we go. 21%, do, do one more piece, just for good measure. Sixteen, yeah, I thought 22, 23 was a little high. Sixteen, all right, this stuff is good. We're gonna do two totes of this, one tote of ash, and then probably two totes of ash, one tote of maple. Sound good? Sounds good.
How do you do? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven pieces of firewood that fell out. Betsy, are you gonna help put them back in? All right, so I already pulled out one tote of poplar, which is over there. Um, we just found another tote of poplar buried back in here. This tote right here. So uh, Chris is working on getting it pulled out with the core midi. So I'm gonna pull this one out and then we have a tote of birch over on the other side that's looking pretty good as well. This, all of this shuffling of totes and everything is, uh, is why we need to do a major reorganization here in the wood yard. Um, after talking at length with Chris and some other people like uh, Doug over at One Eye Customs, I think we're basically going to do a flip-flop where all of the totes that need seasoning are gonna be in the center of the wood yard so we have access to them from both sides. They'll also have the most sun uh, you know, especially in the summertime when there's leaves on the trees. And our log pile is gonna go along this big back wall over here. I'm thinking if we do rows of totes in kind of chronological order, we will be able to access them from, from both sides and be able to, you know, get to the seasoned wood easier and be able to keep track of it a little bit easier than backing ourselves into a corner kind of like we have done here. Looks like he got the tote. Alright guys, we're about to head down to the International, but I thought I'd show you the Christmas lights put up yesterday all along the new fence here. Got them on both sides of the house, running down the front steps. Got our Norway spruce tree and hydrangea tree out here. 
I'll walk out to the front. You guys can see them. So, for somebody that's never done Christmas lights on their house, their entire life growing up, he goes and gets a fence, and uh, a month later, there's Christmas lights all over the place. <laughs> so, uh, Sarah was pretty happy. She had mentioned she wanted Christmas lights, and I surprised her yesterday. She came home from work. It was dark out, and uh, she saw all the lights. So, I think it looks pretty good. All right, guys, we are back the next day. Um, today was pretty cold. It was only like a high of like 34 here. Um, both stoves have been going here in the house. And we are left with yet another empty tote of wood here for uh, our wood stove. So I need to get this swapped out. Then the plan is going to be to hook up the F-250 to the dump trailer down there, load up a tote of cherry and a tote of oak, and we're gonna go deliver to another repeat customer. Uh, this will be their second delivery of the season so far. We got some exciting things in these two boxes there, and no, I'm not talking about the empty Coors Banquet bottles. I'm talking about the two brown cord cardboard boxes. Um, I'm really excited to get the things in those boxes installed. Drop a comment down below uh, as to guess what you think are in those boxes. What are you guys up to? Huh? Hi, Lou. How you doing, buddy? What's up, Gus? Huh? What are you guys doing? We gotta get rid of that pumpkin, huh? I'm surprised you haven't eaten it yet, Lou. It's probably all soggy and soft. This will be the next culprit to go into the basement. After that, we only got two more of these big chunk totes um, out here. We've already burned through, I think that was the fourth in the basement, so this will be the fifth. Um, we got another one over here, which is pretty ready to go. All that stuff is off the splitter, been split for months. And then this one over here is big chunks that could definitely stand. I mean, they definitely need to be split. And then I have one over on the other side of the log pile from where the brute force firewood processor was. So I'll probably be tapping into some of my own firewood supply this year, which is fine. Installing that second Yodel uh, wood burning insert was not at all a plan. My buddy called up one day, he said, hey, I'm ripping two of these out of a house that I'm totally gutting and redoing. Do you want them? And I said, yes, I absolutely want them. So I had really only budgeted to be, or planned on burning wood in, you know, the, the one original Quadrifier stove this year. Uh, buying a brand new firewood insert was not really in the budget, but getting one for next to nothing was definitely in the budget. You ready to go inside? You ready to go inside? All right, let's go guys. Here's the new insert. Crank it away. I left the uh, door open just to crack. Now that we got some good coals going again. Whoa. Close this puppy up. That blower should be on in no time. Let's go check on number two. 
Number two appears to be going just fine. Up around uh, 450. This one's been going all day. The other one I just got going. Guys, these are the two totes we're going to be delivering here this afternoon. Um, one oak, one cherry. This stuff looks really nice. It's all stacked in there. Um, this stuff has been seasoning for a while. Everybody seems to like when I do the uh, moisture content, so we'll do one piece each. Here, I'll show you before. It's all checked and cracked on the ends. I don't know if you can see that, but. Here's the oak. That was embarrassing. We were right at like 13% on the inside of this oak. Let me see. Ugh. 14 if I really, not now, it just keeps going down, like 13%. Oh. Let's see what the cherry is. Ugh. It won't even won't even stick in but there we go right at 14 percent stuff is like kindling sticks listen to this it's the woodhound mating call and here's the oak You do that long enough, all the woodhounds in the area will come running. I'm gonna go grab the truck and trailer. Don't you guys go nowhere. block underneath the jack when I take it off the international or just crank it up more and not use the drop leg because now I'm all the way down to the pin and the, my pickup truck isn't going to be high enough to uh, be able to drop it down all the way which sucks Comes in handy every time. So I always leave it in the back of the truck. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you. 
Got those two totes dumped lickety split kind of fighting the darkness here plus it's a Wednesday Sarah goes into the office on Tuesdays and Wednesdays um, so those are my two nights to make dinner and uh, sometimes she can get a little hangry if uh, I don't have dinner ready by the time that she gets home I'm sure a lot of you guys know exactly what I'm talking about All right, guys, we got it dumped here with my buddy James. This is your office, right? Oh, yeah. And uh, yeah, Tanner White Architects here. They got quite the uh, fireplace. This this used to be an old house, right? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. OK, so, so this is a breezeway to the garage. Very down. nice. Come on in. Come on in. Wait till you guys see this fireplace. Oh, like it looks like you got a little decorations going on here. There's nothing going on. We ran out of wood. Oh, yeah. We're ran out, out of wood, wood when? Today, right? Today. So, here I am. Jake, DIY. Texting me this morning. We're out of wood. Last fire. Supply. This is a uh, pretty cool area to have, yeah. have your office. Some big computers there, so. Oh, is this uh, is this your your this spot? The main event, the oh main event. boy! <laughs> there we go, the whole nine yards. <laughs> nice, nice. Well, I appreciate you guys uh, always buying your firewood for me. Burns good. Boom. There we go. Thanks, buddy.